You got Jeremiah 31? At the same time, saith the Lord, will, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? And thy shall be my people. Amen. You shall be my people. You are a spiritual Israel. Some of you don't even know that. But we are spiritual Israels. Come on. Where are we living? Spiritual Israels. It depends. We are called to be spiritual Israels. But it's because of the, of the calling that's upon our life. It's because of the anointing. Just everybody can't be spiritual Israels. Don't go out of here and say, well, guess what? I'm a spiritual Israel and living like the devil. That ain't God's plan. You see, there's something you got to do to get to this place. And I'm here to tell you something. God is trying to move the church. And I know we've heard it uh, uh, year after year after year. But I don't know about you. It's been, I ain't never known gas, amen, to be $4 a gallon. The Bible teaches that we'll live in a land of plenty and starve to death. We're living in a land of plenty where there's more gas and we know what to do with it. And people are yet having to decide, do I buy my food or do I buy gas? I'm telling you what it is. And I'm not preaching doom and gloom, but I'm trying to tell you something. God is trying to wake up spiritual Israel. God is trying to wake up spiritual Israel, and he's using the world to wake us up. Because for years we've sat under prophets and apostles of God, and they have spoke a word into our spirit, and we have rebelled against the word. And now God has had to take and turn the tables and allow the world to bring depression, to bring suicide spirits, to bring all manner of, of, of sin upon the world, to make God's spiritual Israel turn around. Oh, I told you I wouldn't be popular. See, as First Lady began to speak this morning, it's because we have no fear of God. It's because people have walked with God at a time in their life, and now they have turned around and living just any old way. Well, I'm here to tell you something. You're either in or you're out. You can't straddle the fence. You cannot live that kind of lifestyle and be the spiritual Israel. See, the spiritual Israel is going to raise, be raised for the occasion. I said not the natural church. Or we could pack this place out and we could be building and building and building, but that is not going to do no good. You see, we got our eyes on too many buildings. We've got our eyes on too many red seats and red carpets and maroon walls. You see, it ain't about having paved parking lots. Amen. It's about having the word and having the anointing and having the unction of the Holy Ghost. Thus saith the Lord. Can I tell you what's going to have to take place when the spiritual Israel rises up? It'll be thus saith the Lord. I got the men and women of God will begin to prophesy. Thus saith the Lord. When's the last? time you heard a word thus saith the Lord not what came out of your spaghetti or what came out of your chili but I'm talking about the spiritual word we're more concerned about what we're going to eat I don't know what time it is at one o'clock or two o'clock whatever time it might be we're more concerned about where we're going to eat so many people Few people heard about the fast, realized they were going to have to fast today, and they put all they could get in. Some of you are going to fast uh, not these three days, but the next three days, and you're going to try to make up for it. But it ain't going to do you no good. Amen. It's going to be like the manna that God sent down in the wilderness. He sent manna. And all everything that they could not eat, and they not, could not contain, it went bad. Amen. So if you try to overdo it, if you're used to eating a whopper and you try to eat two because you realize you're going to fast, the second whopper will make you sick. Oh, I told you I wouldn't be popular today. Amen. 
Glory to God. He said, it shall be my people. I don't know about you, but I've got to get God's face. I've got to get a hold of God's face and say, God, here I am. What do you want me to do? As I was going through the word trying to find something, amen, went back on my own notes and I said, God, I don't want what I used to preach. As powerful as the word came Wednesday night, I said, God, I don't want to preach what I preached Wednesday night. God, I want a fresh word from you. I want something that thus saith the Lord. The church has got to be woke up. I went through the Bible. Amen. And you know how, listen to me, if you've ever been called to preach or to minister, the first thing you want to go to is the mark notes. You want to go, amen, to where you used to preach and what you used to preach. And you try to think back, did that move the people? I didn't come to try to move you. I didn't come to try to stir you up. I come to change your lifestyle. If you leave here today and your life has not been changed, then there's something wrong. If you don't leave here today with God on your mind, that something's wrong. We're living in the last days. Prices of milk, prices of everything's going up. And I'm not speaking doom and gloom. Because I'm here to tell you something. What's going to happen is the spiritual Israel is going to come to a place that we can trust God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know we've seen some hard times. We've seen two ninety nine and two seventy nine, but we ain't never seen gas like it is. And they said before summer's over, regular gas would probably be five dollars a gallon. That don't affect me, and that don't affect you. That does not affect spiritual Israel. Oh, uh, you, you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Good God Almighty, I'm going to tell you one thing. If we don't start seeking the face of God, if we don't quit laying our things down, my God, when we call a fast, the first thing we can be, we're so concerned about, we can't do it, I can't make it. It ain't about can you do it. Amen. Whatever it takes, if I got to take a week off from work and lay in my bed and lay on my face, seeking God's face, I've got to do whatever I got to do. Yeah, but I've only got one week's paid vacation and it's coming up in August and we're wanting to go to Disney World. Honey, let me tell you something what I'm talking about is greater than Disney World it's greater than Pluto it's greater than Mickey Mouse or Mrs. Mickey Mouse honey what I'm talking about is getting a hold of something amen that'll keep you when the storm is raging it'll keep you from sinning it'll keep you living right it'll keep you healed it'll keep you made whole it'll save your children It'll save your kids when they think they ain't doing nothing wrong. We ain't crazy. We've turned away from God's calling and God's plan. It's because it does not fit what we think it's supposed to be. Many of us are not living where we ought to be living because God sent a word and that word rubbed us wrong. God's word will rub you raw. Yes, it will. I said God's word will rub you all raw. It'll make you have to think. It'll make you turn. Amen. Why are you preaching like that? Because I don't want to see you go to hell. Because I love you. You know what your mamas and daddies need to do? You need to start looking your children in the eye and say, let me tell you something. You either change your way. Or you're going to hell. And I know the first thing they say, you ain't supposed to be judging me. It ain't judging you. It's love. It's love. Jesus loved me so much that he looked at me and said, if you don't quit doing what you're doing, you're going to hell. Now I give you eternal life. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. 